Probably the most popular feature of Five Wishes is wish number five, what I want my loved ones to know. If you open up the Five Wishes document, you see choices like I wish to have my family and friends know that I love them. I wish to be forgiven for the times I've hurt my family, friends, and others. It goes on to many other questions. After my death, I'd like my body to be, and then you can circle whether you want to be buried or cremated and give other instructions. And, and you also have opportunities to talk about your life. People append pages to their five wishes. One of the reasons why it is so popular with hospitals and healthcare providers is because the consumers love it. It is bulky and sometimes the physicians like it quick and easy. Give me the medical order, give me the instructions about a ventilator and a feeding tube, but the individual wants to talk about questions that are much bigger. And if you give them that opportunity, they'll do it. And that's why I think Five Wishes is the most popular advanced directive in the United States and the most widely used. Maggie, uh, this question of a life review, you've been a big proponent of the importance of a life review. Explain what a life review is. So uh, that term was coined by a guy called Robert Butler in the 60s. And um, it kind of, what he was noticing with elder, elder patients was that when they were given the space to talk about their lives and to zero in and focus on um, specific parts that were important to them, and they were just listened to, he noticed that symptoms went down and health improved. So this was fascinating. So he wanted to look into this more. And then, you know, things were built upon from there and there was something called reminiscence work. So that's something that you can do that's sort of less therapeutic. Um, you could do it more in kind of a care setting or maybe a social worker could deliver it or um, staff in a nursing home or this kind of thing. And what that is, is it's the deliberate taking of space to allow somebody to talk about their life and to let them steer that process. Um, you know, I think when we're speaking about end-of-life care and the five wishes, I mean, one thing that always strikes me about um, those moments is there's so many decisions to be made. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like this decision, that decision, this decision. It's how does anybody do it? How does anybody get through it? Um, and they're important. They're all big ones. There's not one small one. Every one of them is big. And we're trying to be careful and make the right decisions, and that's important. And I think Five Wishes is wonderful with that because it structures that and makes that easier for people. And I think by doing that, that can create a little bit more space for people to slow down, be still enough to hear what the person wants to talk about, the things that they want to say, the things that are precious to them, uh, the things they want to resolve, their needs, who they want to talk to, what they want to talk to them about. And I think that's what we're trying to do with Life Review is create that space deliberately. We're all doing Life Review all the time and this is not something that elders do. You know, children do it, you know, when they pass from one stage to another. You know, they leave um, primary school, you know, and they move into secondary school and they start talking about that process and memories and their friends at that time or their friends after that. That's Life Review. You know, so we're all doing it all the time. When we get older, we have a real need to do it more formally in a more structured way. It becomes more acute, you know. We really need to reflect on our life and have that seen in the face of another, have another person recognize what we want to say about our life, you know. We're kind of effectively saying, I'm here and I've been here and my life has been precious and I, I need someone to see the precious parts of that. Right. You know. And the precious parts of that are obviously wonderful memories uh, when they write about how they want to be remembered, what they want their loved ones to know. But part of life review can be painful, can it? Oh, absolutely. So some of the things that will come up in that process um, are things like unfinished business, you know, things we have done wrong, people we have hurt, regrets that we have, that we, we have a need to talk about, have somebody hear it. We want to take kind of accountability for it or... We want to see that in the face of another person, express regret. That's some of it. Losses, you know, people we have lost, uh, the things we didn't get to say to somebody that we wished we had, um, regrets about children, this kind of thing. The thing about this is people will be shy of listening to those sometimes or they'll offer platitudes or they'll say everything, you know, don't worry about it or, you know, that's not what people are looking for when they review life, you know. 
they're looking to say it out loud and have it seen and heard. And I think that, uh, you know, a well-lived life, as we all know, has all of those things. And we have a need to share them, particularly as we're approaching the end. If the discussion is just about a ventilator or a feeding tube in a time of emergency, uh, certainly uh, few people want to have that discussion. Mm -hmm. But it can be painful to have these discussions, as you just said, on Life Review, um, especially when you might come to matters of disappointment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so does this going to be just depressing for someone to go through a Life Review process? Can they do it alone? I think, can they do it alone? I think they can do parts of it alone. I think they are doing it alone anyhow. Many people, <laughs> let's be honest. I think, right. you know, we're all doing right. it. Uh, not everybody wants to sit and listen to us all the time, you know, um, and some people are doing it alone. Um, but I think that there can be painful parts. There is a beauty in that pain, though, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a beauty, a wholeness in that. Uh, a sense of um, meeting a need that they have to put it out there. I don't think that it feels just painful. I think it feels painful and beautiful at the same time. Um, and certainly when you listen to someone and experience it with them, that is how it feels. It's deeply satisfying as well as painful. It's the stuff of life. You know, it's kind of, you really do walk away from it like, this is why we're here. We're here to do this with one another. This is what people need and crave and want. And not just at the end of life. We want this all the time. And we don't do enough of it. But if we can do it at the end, you don't regret it. Exactly.